Hello friends, welcome back. This video is regarding to understand the very interesting fact that why we are using the scale of 1.5 in identification of the outlier in box plot. This is very interesting topic, right? So let's begin to learn why we are using 1.5 in case of box plot. I had already made some videos on the box plot and if you have to learn box plot from its basics, please visit those videos. The understanding of the box plot is very important to understand what is meant by outlier and what is the scale of 1.5. So I'm going to explain this box plot in short. When we are using the box plot, box plot is used to compare the distributions. We are going to use the box plot when our X is categorical factor and our response is continuous. In that situation, when we want to compare two population, two samples or two distributions, we are going to use the box plot. Another application of the box plot is to understand the central tendency of the data. That means by looking at the box plot, we can say where our data is centered. The third application of the box plot is to highlight the variability of the data. By looking at the shape of the box plot, we can see what is the distribution of our data. We can also determine whether a sample distribution is symmetric or skewed by looking at the box plot shape. And the next important application of the box plot is to identify the outliers in our data and that we are going to discuss today in detail. For simplicity, let's understand what are the all elements of this box plot. This box plot is having six main elements and let's understand each of these elements before going into the details of outliers. The first and the middle point is called as 15th percentile of this box plot. This is indicating median of the data. That means if you are going to arrange our data in ascending order, half of the observation are below this point and half of the observations are above this point. The next element of the box plot is 75th percentile. This is also called as Q3 or third quartile. What is the meaning of it? 75% of the data values are less than or equal to this value. The third element of the box plot is 25th percentile. It is also called as first quartile or Q1. The meaning of this first quartile is 25% of the data values are less than or equal to this value. If you look at this Q1 to Q3 box, this is representing middle 50% of the data. This is called as IQR or interquartile range. In order to represent the remaining 50% of the data, we are using the lines and these lines are called as whiskers. There are two lines if you can look at this box plot, one is on the upper side and one is on the lower side. The line which is on the upper side is called as upper whisker and the line which is on the lower side it is called as lower whisker. Now how to calculate the length of this whisker? To calculate the length of the upper whisker, we are using the formula Q3 plus 1.5 into interquartile range or maximum value minus Q3 whichever is lower out of these two formulas. To identify the lower whisker length, we are using the formula of Q1 minus 1.5 into interquartile range or Q1 minus minimum value, whichever is higher. Now the next question comes in our mind, why we are using this 1.5, right? And that is a topic that we are going to discuss today. Before to understand this concept, let's talk about the points which are going beyond this whisker lens. These are called as outliers. The meaning of outlier is an unusually large or small observation. Values beyond the whisker lens are called as outliers. Now to this point, you have the basic understanding of the box plot and how it is getting represented. Now let's go into the point why we are using 1.5 into calculation of this whisker length. You must aware about this diagram. This is standard normal distribution or also called as Gaussian distribution. This normal distribution is having some characteristics and if you want to learn them in detail, just please visit the video on normal distribution which is already published by me. Coming back to the point, let's understand some of the characteristics of this standard normal distribution here. This standard normal distribution is exactly symmetrical. That means left side of the distribution is exactly same as that of the right side of the distribution. The second characteristics of the standard normal distribution is it consists of 68.26% of the data points when we talk about mean plus or minus one sigma. It also consists of 95.44% of the data points if we talk about mean plus or minus two sigma. 
Here, sigma is nothing but the standard deviation of the data. The fourth characteristic of the standard normal distribution is that it consists of 99.72 percentage of the data points when we talk about mean plus or minus three standard deviations or mean plus or minus three sigma. Now the question comes about what is about the remaining 0.28 percentage of the data points. This 0.28 percentage of the data points are evenly distributed on both sides of the standard normal distribution that is 0.14 percentage on the left side and 0.14 percentage on the right side of the distribution. Now let me explain why we are discussing about this. Here we are looking for the data points which is useful for us. So we are looking for mean plus or minus three sigma data points which is useful for us and which is going beyond that we are calling them as a unusual observations. By keeping this concept in mind let's go to the box plot again. If you look at the shape of the box plot we are calling it as a 50 percentage of the data points which is at the center which is ranging from 25 percentage to 75 percentage or in other words it is q1 and q3. Now let's calculate what is the z value corresponding to this 25 percentage and 75 percentage of the probability. When we are talking about the probability it is mentioning what is the percentage of the data that is lies below the curve. If you want to understand in detail what is the z value how to calculate that please visit the normal distribution video that I had already created. Now here our scope is what is the scale right. So let's come back to this point we are going to understand what is the z value corresponding to 25 percentage and 75 percentage of the probability. If you look at this standard normal table if you take that value which is coming as between 0.67 and 0.68. So it is exactly coming at the middle of 0.67 and 0.68. So let's take that value as 0.675. As we had already seen the standard normal distribution it is symmetrical so we can say 25 percentage on either side of the mean we are having the same z value. So it is plus or minus 0.675. So this is the entire basic we must know before to understand why we are using 1.5 okay so let's go into the main subject now if we consider the scale is equal to 1 that means instead of 1.5 if we consider 1 into the formula what we will get we will get the lower bound or the lower whisker which is equal to q1 minus 1 into iqr if we put the values into this formula q1 is minus 0.675 as we are talking about the lower side minus 1 into q3 is 0.675 minus minus of 0.675 which is our q1 into sigma. If you calculate this it is coming as minus 2.025 sigma. So this is the lower whisker length or lower bound we will get. Similarly if we calculate the upper whisker length or the upper bound which will be equal to q3 plus 1 into IQR that is interquartile range which is equal to q3 minus q1. If you put the values into this formula the answer is getting as 2.025 sigma. The conclusion of this calculation is if we take the scale is equal to 1 then according to interquartile range method any data which lies beyond 2.025 sigma from the mean on either side shall be considered as an outlier. But as we know up to 3 sigma on either side of the mean the data is useful. So we cannot take scale is equal to 1 because the decision range gets so small compared to 3 sigma that it considers some data points as outliers even if they are not outliers. This is not desirable situation. Now let's see what happens if we consider the scale is equal to 2 instead of scale is equal to 1. The lower bound will be equal to q1 minus 2 into iqr and if you calculate that it will be coming as minus 3.375 sigma. Similarly if you put the value of scale is equal to 2 into calculation of the upper whisker or upper bound which will be equal to q3 plus 2 into interquartile range that is coming as 3.375 sigma. The conclusion of this calculation is that if we take the scale is equal to 2 then according to iqr method any data which lies beyond 3.375 sigma from the mean on either side shall be considered as an outlier. 
But as we know, up to three sigma on either side of the mean mu, the data is useful. So we cannot take scale is equal to two because the decision range gets so big that it considers some outliers as the data points. This is again not desirable condition. So what is the solution? Let's take the value between one and two. If we take the value as 1.5 and if we calculate the lower bound, lower bound will be equal to Q1 minus 1.5 into interquartile range. If you put the values here, we will be getting the lower bound as minus 2.7 sigma. Similarly, if we calculate the length of the upper whisker or upper bound, which is coming as Q3 plus 1.5 into IQR, which is equal to 2.7 sigma. The conclusion from this calculation is, if we take the scale is equal to 1.5, then according to IQR method, any data which lies beyond 2.7 sigma from the mean mu on either side shall be considered as an outlier. But as we know, up to 3 sigma on either side of the mean, the data is useful. So if we take the scale is equal to 1.5, this makes the decision range closest to what Gaussian distribution considers for an outlier. And this is exactly what we want. So we can consider 1.5 as a good scale to calculate the outlier. Now the question can be in your mind, 1.5 is the exact value that we are looking for? No, the closest value of the scale, which is giving us a three sigma is 1.7. So if we put the scale is equal to 1.7, and if we calculate the lower bound, which is coming as minus 2.97 sigma. Similarly, if we put the value of scale as 1.7, then we will be getting the length of the upper whisker or upper bound, which is equal to 2.97 sigma. The conclusion from these calculations is that if we take the scale is equal to 1.7, then according to IQR method, any data which lies beyond 2.97 sigma from the mean on either side shall be considered as an outlier. But as we know, up to three sigma on either side of the mean, the data is useful. So if you take the scale is equal to 1.7, this makes the decision range the same as that of the Gaussian distribution considers for outlier detection. So this is the desirable situation. Now the question can be coming in your mind, instead of 1.7, why we are using the 1.5? The answer is here. The IQR method is not the perfect method to detect the outlier. And therefore, to keep the tolerance, we are using 1.5 on the upper side. This is a very important concept and we must know why we are using the 1.5 as a scale for calculation of the whisker length in case of box plot. I'm sure this information is useful for you. If you found this information useful, then please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijayasabe.co slash join or successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing, I have created different levels of memberships at my YouTube channel so that I can help you in more deeper way. If you want to join my YouTube channel, just click the join button at my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.